Hi everybody. Welcome to Dandelion Cottage. And marvelous Monday. <laughs> How are you all? I'm Leslie Watkins. And today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. Um, I went to the post office last week and I found a package in the mail that I was very excited to have. And in it was this wonderful stamp set and a little note from Rhonda Wade letting me know that I won a prize. Let me show you what it looks like. Hang on here a second. I'm connecting you to my computer so you can you can see what it looks like. There we go. Okay, so here's a here's an image of the stamp set. And it's a great big stamp. It's a background stamp. So it measures nearly four and a half by Five or four and a four. Let's see, four inches by five and a quarter is, I think, the the size. So anyway, it got me inspired, and um, and I thought I would try something that I haven't really done before, and I'm very pleased with the result, and I want to share that with you. So today's uh, demonstration is going to be on painting with water-based ink. And bear with me just a moment. I just want to make sure I've got you on screen here and you can hear me. Okay, if you can, if you can hear me, um, please leave a comment. Please like and subscribe. Um, I, I will not be responding to your comments during the live because I'll be busy painting, but if you have any questions at any point, please post them down below and I'll be happy to get back to you. So anyway, so I got the idea of using this stamp set to paint a, uh, a watercolor type painting using inks and I'm very pleased with the results, so I want to show that to you. So here's an example of something that I started. It's not quite done yet. And I think you can see the potential here. So um, when, when I was a young art student a long time ago, I went to the Art Students League of New York and I had the privilege of studying with uh, the great master Frank Mason and he would say, that he could paint a masterpiece with shoe polish. Shoe polish, and he was not kidding, it, it was true. I mean, the, the idea is that you paint what you know, not what you see. And that translates into all mediums. So today, in this uh, painting with ink, I'm gonna try to uh, show you the way that I approach a watercolor painting and um, and I think you'll uh, be interested in try this out. I'm also going to be having in May three new classes online, one of which is going to be beginning watercolor with traditional watercolors. Another one will be painting with ink like this, like you're gonna see me do today. And another one uh, of stamping techniques for beginners. So stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in learning more about any of those things, please go to my website at dandeliancottagedesign.com and subscribe to Notes from Dandelion Cottage. And that is a monthly email that you will get on the first of the month, and it will list all of the classes, the registration, the prices, and all the special deals, because um, many of these classes come with all the product included and they're delivered right to your door to make it really easy for you. So let's get started. So I'm going to use um, these uh, ink 
refill. So, so all the products I'm using today are from Stamping Up. And, um, and I sell these products on my website at dandelioncottagedesign.com. You can go there and uh, click under shop and you'll find these things that you'll see me using. So I'm going to use just three colors, a red, a yellow, and a blue. And it doesn't matter what colors you use. You can choose whatever you like and just experiment. And, um, and I'm using this stamp set, Breathtaking Bouquet. And by the way, this is a retiring product, so this is not going to be available for much longer. Um, there's a great big sale going on right now of all the retiring products, and if, and if you think you might like to have this set in your collection, now is the time to get it because it's not going to be here for much longer. And here is the stamp. I have it mounted on this great big clear block. It's also available in a wood mount um, stamp where the rubber is attached to wood. But I would recommend you get the clear block because you'll be able to use that over and over and over again. So that's a, that's a great way to save some money. And I'm using some uh, Sahara Sand ink, which is a, a very pale, neutral tone. Um, it doesn't really matter what color you use. I just, I like this one because, because it's so light, but you could pick a, a gray or a pale violet or any other color that appeals to you. And I'm using the watercolor paper. And this is a, this is a cold press paper. So if, you, if you've been studying watercolor with me for a long time, you know that I prefer hot press paper. And, um, and this, is, this cold press paper has a, a rougher surface. So this is going to be a, um, a, a slightly different effect than what you would see with the hot press. Um, it's, also, it's also a little bit heavier, so it's, it's more of a, a card, so it's going to be less likely to wrinkle or buckle. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the stamp face up, and taking the pad, I'm just going to tap all over making sure I have good coverage. And then instead of pressing down and stamping full strength, I'm going to stamp off once. And what that means is I'm just gonna take this, uh, this scrap paper, I'm just gonna stamp once and then quickly stamp on my paper. And what that's going to do is, is, is it's going to give me a slightly lighter impression. So I hope you can, I think you can see that. So it's very light, but it's just enough for me to see where everything is located. And I'm also, I'm also going to keep the, the case nearby so I can, I can see in better detail some of these areas. Now, we don't have enough time for me to paint the entire thing today, so I'm just gonna do one corner. Um, so let's, let's, just, let's just do this area, and I'm gonna keep an eye on the clock, and, um, and only paint for about 10 or 15 minutes so that we can let you get back to your day. I also have a aqua painter, which is a paintbrush. Actually, it's a, I think they call it a brush pen. And it has water in the handle. So you just unscrew the top and you pour some water into the handle, screw the, the brush back in. And when you want water, you just squeeze it gently and a couple of drops of water come out and you can control that pretty easily. They have a nice point. They come in different sizes. And um, I saw 
a preview of the new Stamping Up catalog that's going to be released in June. And I see that there's a new set of paint brushes similar to this, but a little bit different. And uh, there's going to be a large, a small, and also a flat brush. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. So starting with my lightest colors first, I'm just taking some, let me put this over here so you can see a little bit better. So here's my blue. Okay, and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that to make a, a, a very light green color. And I'm just going to begin to paint some of these little leaves in the background. And it works very much, let me zoom down. There we go. Okay, so this works very much as traditional watercolors would. You can get some nice transparencies. And it, the ink dilutes very well with the, um, with the addition of, of water. You can get a broad uh, range of values. And now what I'm doing is I'm mixing a stronger green, again, with, with just these three colors. Only this time it's a little more on the warmer, darker green tones. And I'm just getting these rose leaves. And this is this is just the first the first pass with paint. And I'm just kind of establishing the areas of color. I'm not I'm not worried about shading or um, you know my, my end result of color mixture so much. It's it's more of a, a base coat. So there you go. So that's that's this area. Take this a little bit further over here. And I'm looking at these flowers and I'm thinking that it's a, as I look at them, I'm thinking that these are roses. They could be peonies, but judging by the leaves, I'm going to call them roses. This little roundish leaf flower in the background looks like a maidenhair fern. These look to be freesias or some kind of lily. Very, If they're freesias, that's one of my favorites. And then, um, and these look like anemones. So these are, these are all very beautiful common garden flowers, things that I have growing in my garden here at Dandelion Cottage that I'm very happy to have. Oh, and I also want to mention, um, I'm using a paper towel, and when I want to change color, I just squeeze the handle of the brush, let that water run through, and it, and it just washes that ink right away. You do want to be careful when you're um, using ink that it is a water-based ink and not uh, some other oil-based ink or some other kind of medium because uh, you, you don't want to... If it's, if it's an acrylic, for instance, you don't want it to mess up your brush. Okay, so let's begin to get this rose established. So I'm taking a little bit of red, and I'm going to put a, a drop of yellow in there to warm it up a little bit. I love those peachy colored roses. And I'm adding plenty of water and I'm just going to put a light wash all over. 
over. Like so. And I'm being careful to see where my freesias begin here. We've got another petal over here. Okay, so there's my rose laid in. Now I'm going to grab some plain yellow and I'm just going to indicate the area that the freesia is because I don't want to paint that by accident. Just take your time, no rush. And if you're somebody who, um, who, who loves watercolor and who's always been interested in doing it but never had the time, guess what? Now's your chance. So this is a great opportunity while we're in this pause, as some people are calling it, to just sort of do some self-reflection and do some of the things that you've never had time to do before. You know, this, this will pass, and um, now's your opportunity, so go for it. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of a, a darker tone in the center of these freesias, just to indicate where the, the center of the flower is. And... Clean my brush. I'm going to grab a little more green this time and making it a little bit stronger and a little bit darker. And I'm just going to indicate some of the shadow areas on these leaves. And I'm drawing with the brush. Um, I am referring to the picture for placement, but I'm also I'm also adding a little bit of my own style and and uh, making it a, a little more painterly. I'm, I've I added another leaf here, and you know you can do that. Make it make it your own. Make it your own, and if you're not quite sure what to do then then follow along it's just like you know painting with numbers or anything else but you know you do you do have the freedom to create choose your own colors you want to paint peonies you can paint peonies okay so so there's the beginning of some some darker areas and now I'm taking just plain water. I'm just softening some of these edges. Just giving it a little bit of a blend. And now I'm going to clean my brush once again and get back to that rose. So taking a stronger red mix. I'm going to begin in the center where the petals are, are tightly closed and I'm just going to go around indicating the form there you go it doesn't take much just a just a few little lines and I think you can see that by just adding a little bit of uh, darker tones you begin to get some dimension and this is just the beginning so you can this can be as loose 
and sketchy as you like, or you could you could bring this to a you know quite a degree of finish. And now let's pay some attention to our freesias. So I'm just, um, the, um, the brush comes to a very nice point, you see? So you can, you can roll that around a little bit and make sure that it's, it's nicely pointed. Oops, sorry. Let me get you in the, <laughs> there we go. Okay, can you see that a little bit? All right, so I'm just using the tippy point of the brush and I'm, and I'm able to get these very fine little lines. These freesias sometimes have these little stripy bits on the, uh, on the center of the petals sort of radiating out. So you can, you can start to capture some of those details. And I think what I want to do with this bottom freesia here, I want to come in with this leaf and just sort of silhouette that petal against it. There we go. And I'll add a little more definition through here. I'm going to take a very pale violet mixture, just taking the blue and the red together, and just filling in some of these blank areas just to send them back into space a little bit. There we go. And now I'm going to start to put some darker accents in my, in my rose. So staying on the, on the shadow side, you know, maybe it, this very easily could be a peony, just as a uh, sneak preview, I'll let you know that in the new Stampin' Up! catalog, there's going to be a suite featuring my favorite flowers of all in the garden, peonies, and I'm very excited to see that, and I'm looking forward to doing some more of this painting with those as the subject. There we go. Oh, sorry. There you go. <laughs> sorry, folks, I got carried away. And I'm just, I'm just sort of pushing the, pushing, pulling the ink around I can vary the color a little bit, so I can, if I wanted to warm this up, I could, I could add a little bit of yellow in the center. And then for my uh, darkest, before we do that, let's just get these, there we go. For my darkest accents, I can take the red and the blue together and get a very rich, beautiful violet and so I can start to introduce some of that here and there sparingly and again I can use the brush to indicate some of the veins on the leaves a couple of little strokes
Okay, so you can, so I think you can see you can get a very painterly effect by painting this way with very little effort. So I've been painting for about 15 minutes now. And of course you could, you could continue and, and make this as, you know, finished a painting as you would like until you could, you could actually hang it on the wall and, and use it for a piece of art, or you could give it to somebody as a note card, just whatever you'd like. But you could easily spend a lovely afternoon or morning if you're a morning person. <laughs> I'm not so much a morning person, but there you go. So um, I hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration. I hope you'll visit my website and check out some of the information that's there. Uh, there, there's a there's a lot there's a lot going on this month and in May at Stamping Up. We've got the retirement sale. We've got the new catalog that's going to be coming out in June, and um, and it's spring and it's beautiful and it's a great time to paint flowers. So, thank you so much for joining me. Please put your comments down below. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And check out notes from Dandelion Cottage and uh, see what the classes are coming up in May. They're going to be great. So I hope to see you there. Thanks again. Stay in, stay well, and stay creative. Bye for now.